One, when listening to music, one UI lets me skip to the next track by just long pressing the volume up key or going to the previous track by long pressing the down key. Saves me the hassle of needing to take out my phone out of my pocket or turning on the screen. To get this running, jump into the GoodLock app, go to Sound Assistant, and enable Control Music with Volume Keys. Two, One UI allows you to create a video collage which can come in handy if you want to post an Instagram story about a trip you made or some past memories from your camera roll all in one go. To do this, open the Samsung Gallery app, select up to six photos or videos, tap on the More button, hit Create, and then Collage. You can change the collage style, aspect ratio, and more. Once you're done, hit the Save button and you can find it in your gallery. If you guys are enjoying this quick style video where I just jump straight into the action, go ahead and drop a thumbs up to show me and I'll keep it up for future videos. Three, you can launch Google Assistant when you double tap on the power key. To do this, make sure you have the Google Assistant app installed from the Play Store. Then within GoodLock, you're going to open Routines Plus. Then hit Location-Based Quick Access. And then for the action, select Side for the key and double press for the interaction. From there, just set a random place. It doesn't really matter because we're going to end up removing this later. And for the app, select Google Assistant. Hit save. One last thing you're going to do is open the actual Bixby Routines app, most likely found within your app drawer. And in the Routines tab, you'll see the routine we've made. Tap on it and then select Edit. Remove the place by hitting the minus key, hit Next, and done. Finally, double tap that power key and you should have Google Assistant opening up smoothly. Thumbs up for that. Honestly though, I wish there was an easier way to do this, but we can't because of Bixby. If you pull down the shutter button within the camera, you'll take a burst of shots or you can have a recorded GIF. Pretty neat. Within the camera settings, just look for an option titled swipe shutter button and then you can choose between a burst shot or a GIF. And while we're on the topic of the shutter button, you can quickly swipe up on it to turn it into a second one. Makes taking a picture a lot easier, no matter how you hold your phone. One UI can keep your display enabled at all times whenever you look at the screen. It can detect your face through the front camera, and all you need to do is enable an option within the settings, under advanced features, and then motion and gestures, and toggle on the fourth option. Split screen is a fantastic way to multitask, but some apps like Instagram still don't support it. Well, One UI is here to the rescue because within the GoodLock app, under Multistar, you can force all the apps to be openable in split screen. So now I can have Instagram be opened alongside another app without a hiccup. Check this out. Whenever I jump into Chrome and swipe up diagonally on the edge of the screen, a new tab gets opened, quick and simple. Or when I swipe down diagonally, this toolbar pops up so that I can change the brightness, control my media, or toggle on a system setting. It's like having a tinier version of the Quick Settings panel. It's only available on One UI, and to get it, you need to go into the One Hand Operation Plus section of the GoodLock app, enable the handles, and to get the new tab shortcut for Chrome, just choose Keyboard Shortcuts for one of the actions. You're also going to want to tap on the gear icon and remove all the shortcut options for Chrome except for new tab. If you want that tiny quick settings window, you'll also need to enable the quick tools option. And honestly, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many more spectacular actions that you can choose to use. Just do some quick digging within this menu and I promise you'll find some goodies. Smart widgets is something that I'm incredibly jealous of. Just like iOS, One UI lets you stack multiple widgets on top of each other so that you can scroll through them on the same page. The best part is that One UI allows you to use any widgets that you'd like. There seems to be no limit on how many widgets you can combine. And there are multiple sizes to choose from. Google, if you're watching this, please make this happen natively on Android. Picture in picture mode is something that I love to use all the time when watching YouTube or navigating Google Maps, but One UI takes it a step further by also supporting their clock app. So whenever I set a timer and jump to the home screen, I can still see the time in a small window and then it turns into a bubble. You can even pause it if you'd like. Super handy and it doesn't cause any distractions whatsoever. I just wish other OEMs could follow the same path of allowing apps, other apps to use picture in picture mode and not just for video. There's a whole sea of possibilities. Polycam, the sponsor of this video, can also make anyone jealous. 
It's the leading 3D scanner app that allows you to create a 3D model of any object that's in front of you. And honestly, it does a fantastic job. The way it works is you take a bunch of pictures all around the object that you like to scan, or you can just upload any images from any other device, including a DSLR or a drone. Then Polycam will stitch all the pictures together to create an impressive 3D model. You can even rotate the object to see it from different angles and zoom in to see the details and create custom videos within the app. From there, you can publish it to the Explorer feed to let others see your creation or export it to your favorite 3D software like Blender, Cinema 4D, SketchUp, AutoCAD, and more. The best part is that you can see other people's 3D captures within the Explore tab, with some of them being extremely mind-blowing. From the Explorer feed, you can also download other people's scan for your own use from the world's fastest growing user-generated library of 3D assets. You'll find entire buildings, rooms, complex objects, and even entire cities or mountains. It's insane. My 3D models aren't as crazy, but if you'd like to see what I managed to scan, my username is at HowToMen. So make sure to check out Polycam through the link in the description. It's free to download on both Android and iOS. One of the biggest annoyances with some social apps like Snapchat or Facebook is that they don't support multiple accounts. You need to sign out of the current account to use another one. It's super annoying. One UI is one of the few OEMs that lets you duplicate those social apps easily so that you can have multiple accounts. No more needing to sign out. It's a feature called Dual Messenger, and if you search that up in the settings, you'll find it. Do you want to make any wallpaper look like it's in 3D whenever you move your hand around? Well, One UI can make it happen within its GoodLock app underneath the Wonderland section. You just tap on New, Gallery, select an image, then tap on image settings, enable motion effect. You'll probably need to enable it twice because the app is a bit buggy. Hit save, give it a name, and set it up as your wallpaper. Samsung also includes some cool presets that you could use. The recents menu is also very customizable, which I'm jealous of because most OEMs don't even let me modify this page. Within the GoodLock app, underneath the home up section, there's an option to customize the task changer. And I can do things like change the layout to make it more of my style. For my personal favorite is the grid because it shows a ton more apps at once. I can also remove the search bar and recommended apps, mess around with the gesture settings, and even enable a mini mode which makes the screens a lot smaller for easier use with one hand. No other smartphones take it to this level of customization. Screen capturing is also taken to the next level in One UI. Just like any other screen recorder, you can change the resolution or choose to use the internal sound or microphone but what makes me jealous of One UI is that I can have my face pop up on the screen while I record. Useful for any gamers out there who are trying to make commentary gameplay for social media or their friends. The best part though is that I can easily key out a green screen background. I just jump into the nice shot section of the GoodLock app and tap on the green icon to make the background transparent. Also within the nice shot app, you can add a delete button to the screenshot toolbar just in case you capture the screen by accident and want to delete it quickly. And even though this is a small one, within the screenshot settings, it's nice that they give you the option to hide the status bar and navigation buttons from being shown. Cleans up your screenshots nicely. One UI is also one of the few OEMs that let you control the brightness of your LED flashlight. So if you don't want to blind others with that shockingly bright light, you can turn down the brightness. Fortunately, there are rumors that Google is working to include this as a native feature within Android 13, so let's cross our fingers. I'm not a huge fan of Bixby, but I do get why a lot of people like it. What I'm more interested in though is Bixby Routines. It's a great way to make my phone even smarter with custom automations. For example, I can have my Galaxy automatically silence itself whenever I get to school or work. I can also set a routine for when I get home, like having the phone turn on its Wi-Fi and enable the sound again. And when I jump in the car, I can add the phone, read any incoming notifications out loud, and automatically start playing music. That's just a glimpse at what Bixby Routines can accomplish. There's a lot more where that came from, especially if you use the Routines Plus app found within the GoodLock app. So if you're not taking advantage of it now, you, you better start. One UI 4 introduced virtual memory, which allows you to increase your RAM amount by using some of your internal storage space. And with a recent update of One UI 4.1, you can now choose how much space you like to grab and use. It's pretty useful because it acts as a backup when your actual RAM gets filled up. 
The addition of the virtual RAM ensures that applications are kept in the background for a faster app load up time. One UI did not forget about the sound, because there are so many unique optimizations that help improve your audio experience. For one, you can customize the volume panel, including its location, whether it should be on the right or left side, the option to include individual app volumes within the expanded panel, and more. You can also control the volume of apps individually. It's perfect for apps like TikTok, which start blasting sound at you as soon as you open it. At least now, you'll have a reasonable volume whenever you open a social app. Within the Sound Assistant app, I also find it kind of cool that you can change your voice to a variety of different things, like a variety of things like a robot, a middle-aged man, make it sound like you're in a stadium, a lo-fi landline, and more. It's not useful whatsoever because you can't say the sound or record longer than three seconds, but I did find it kind of fun to play around with. And finally, separate app sound is one of the biggest reasons why I love to use a Galaxy for listening purposes. It allows me to only play my Spotify music through my Bluetooth speaker while everything else is piped through my phone speaker. I seriously wish other phones would allow this option. One UI also makes it easy to connect my phone to my PC. Within the Windows app, I'll be able to respond to messages, see incoming notifications, glance at all my photos, place phone calls, and even screencast any apps. Plus, it's so easy to make that connection. Just look up link to Windows in the system settings, and then it'll guide you to a web page on your desktop where you can scan a QR code. A few more permissions and boom, you'll connect. It's beautiful. Samsung DeX is also an alternative way of connecting your phone to your PC. It provides you with a whole new interface that looks very similar to Chrome OS, and you can run different apps simultaneously and access your data. But honestly, I don't think it's that convenient considering how laggy it is. One UI is also one of the few OEMs that allow you to encrypt your internet traffic and block tracking apps whenever you're connected to a public Wi-Fi network. The feature is called Secure Wi-Fi, and it's only free for a little over a thousand megabytes before you need to pay an extra $2 a month uh, for unlimited protection. Still, it could be a better alternative to a more expensive VPN. The call screen is something that many OEMs don't bother allowing you to change, but of course, One UI does. For starters, within the call settings of the phone app, underneath a menu titled Call Display while using apps, you can change the size of the pop-up that appears whenever someone calls you. Then, if you go back and jump into Call Background, here you'll be able to customize the look of the call screen. In the Layout tab, you can make the contact's profile picture a bit smaller or bigger. And then, the Background tab allows you to add a picture or a video to the call's background. You can even have your AR emoji dancing around, having a good time whenever one of your buddies calls. It's not bad. This next one is a lot more well known, but I do think most people take it for granted. The double tap feature on the power key that lets you open up the camera can be customized to open any app. Just search up double press within the settings and it should pop up as the first option. Then tap on the gear icon and select any app from the list. Unfortunately, it won't let you open up Google Assistant from this menu, but luckily my workaround at the beginning should work just fine. We can't forget about the OG Edge Panels feature. It's been around even before One UI became a thing. No other phone or app has been able to create anything as seamless or powerful. Not only does Samsung already provide some useful panels like apps, smart select, weather, tools, etc., but there's even a whole library of them created by other people. It's just kind of funny how the top one is a replication of the iOS control center. Last but not least, I love that I can switch between the super fast charging to regular fast charging or just disable those two altogether. It may sound like I'm crazy when I say that, but it is nice to not have the phone heat up as much whenever I plug it in. Plus I can extend the lifespan of my battery by limiting the maximum charge to 85%. Just small things like that really make One UI very amazing to use. Anyways, those are all of my favorite One UI exclusive features. I know there are plenty more out there, but I just wanted to show off the ones that I enjoy using the most. If you know of any more One UI exclusives, feel free to share them in the comments so that we can all learn about them. Either way, thank you guys for tuning in once again. Please don't forget to drop a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel when you do so. And why not get subscribed with the notification bell turned on? I promise quality videos like this are a weekly thing on the channel and you're not gonna wanna miss out. Either way, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!